All right, let me just map this out a little bit here. Okay, Klaus Schwab, right, okay. So first, totalitarianism. The, the, the way that a government implements totalitarianism is, is they identify something that is so overridingly important that everything else must be sacrificed to that one thing. So usually it's a war, or in this case, a pandemic, that gives the pretext for suspending civil liberties and exercising total control, surveillance, and censorship over the population. Um, because everything is cast in the light of one thing, keeping everybody safe, for example. Usually it's some form of safety or security. Well, on a personal level then, we can also engage in totalitarian behavior and uh, enhance, strengthen the field of totalitarianism when we cast the world into the black and white tones of the one important thing. Actually, religious fundamentalism is a form of totalitarianism on, on a smaller scale, where this is the one important thing. And no matter if you're talking to a fundamentalist about anything, they will very quickly bring it back to whatever their fundamental beliefs are. It could be you know, religious fundamentalism, it could be climate fundamentalism, it could be um, seeing everything in terms of uh, uh, patriarchy or white supremacy, or I mean, even the Enneagram. I mean, like there, there are these uh, ways to, these rubrics of, of understanding that can that can be as like I was describing before become glued to your eyeballs, and you might also call those things a, a totalizing discourse that colonize all of reality in its wildness and tame it into a finite set of categories and a certain logical structure. So when it comes to um, say Klaus Schwab or Bill Gates, we could ask what aspects of their humanity are invisible through whatever totalizing lens we are applying to them. And in fact, you know, I've actually thought quite a lot about, about both of those two men to try to understand them. Like one thing that makes it hard to understand them is if I simply write them off as inexplicably irreducibly evil. But what happens if I ask in earnest the question that interbeing invites, what is it like to be you? How could it be that, that Klaus Schwab believes that what he's doing is good and he is the hero of his own story? It's not actually that hard. Nope. Um, I, I, you know, even that infamous phrase, you will own nothing and be happy. <laughs> Do you know where that came from? Have you thought about where that came from? It actually, the, it originates, I believe, in this concept of a leasing economy, where instead of owning automobiles and washing machines and, and computers, because really what you want isn't a washing machine, what you want is to be able to wash your clothes. So instead of owning them, you lease them and you, and, and, and you simply pay you know, a rental fee for your washing machine. Why is that good? Because then the manufacturer has an incentive to create durable, repairable products rather than the throwaway products. Once it's sold to you, you know, I'm done. So what if, what if it remains the property of the manufacturer and they are responsible for its maintenance and disposal? That would be a good thing, right? So this is like one little piece. If you, if you take apart the Great Reset um, and really it, with a generous mind, look at where it's coming from, it's not so obvious that it's a bad thing. The reason why it is dangerous in my mind comes from uh, some of the unexamined assumptions that it draws from. 
But if you don't examine those assumptions and address the Great Reset uh, from that place, and instead you address it from this ignorant misunderstanding of its motivation, then you're going to seem like a, a shrill, hysterical idiot to the elites that are promoting it. And you will be ineffective in, in even like a, in a logical way of uh, refuting it or, or questioning it because you won't understand it. So this is, even if, if we are going to fight certain powers in the world, we will be more effective if we don't simply write them off as evil. Yep. You have to understand your enemy. If, you're gonna have, if it's gonna be an enemy, you have to understand your enemy. And when you do, you may not have to fight at all. 